So I'm uh, driving to work, <clears throat> and something I was, I've been thinking about for a while is uh, bootstrapping. Sort of, if it's really even needed today in, in today's modern world, and what that kind of means. Hey guys, a little shout out to me and my new course, the 100 Algorithms Challenge, how to ace your next JavaScript coding interview. In here, we we go over a hundred different algorithm solutions. There's about seven and a half to eight hours of content and we're just knocking them out. It's a whole lot of fun and a big challenge. I, I encourage you to take it on. Um, you can help me out in the process. There's a coupon code in the description to get it for just $10 and you can help buy this cat, this cat a can of cat food because he's starving, all right? That's that's gonna be on your conscience. Uh, but no, seriously, check it out in the description below. So, the way that this sort of came about with me and just sort of thinking about Bootstrap was for a while I've been, I've been kind of dependent upon Bootstrap, but much more so in the past. And I started to see that my, my learning my learning was being diminished, especially in the CSS and responsive web design arena. Um, and I started thinking, okay, well, now I know what to, how to solve that and what I need to do, but why did I originally use it? And the question, what, the answer that I sort of came to was because it was easier. Um, it was easier to get up and going. It was easier um, to to accomplish the things in CSS that I wanted without having to dive in and fully understand the material. Now, I started using Bootstrap about four years ago. Uh, and uh, in the last four years, in terms of responsive web design, in terms of, um, uh, in, in that arena, in terms of the reasons I started to use Bootstrap, a lot of that has been solved. We, we now have custom uh, CSS properties or variables is usually how I look at them, but they're technically custom properties. We have things like Flexbox, and we have things like CSS Grid. Really all Bootstrap gives us is their own sort of wrapper for that type of stuff. And then also, it gives us um, some neatly defined classes and styles. But do we, I mean, do we even want those defined classes and styles? Um, I mean, maybe we want them, that's fine. But uh, what's the trade-off? Well, the trade-off is you're, you're limiting your CSS growth. And I've said this in the past about CSS, where you can learn about 90% of CSS in a week or a weekend, but that last 10% is gonna take you a lifetime. <laughs> uh, CSS is a, a very complex, um, aspect of front-end web development where a lot of front-end developers really struggle there. They really are more of the, hey, I understand the JavaScript aspect, the logic aspect. And then when they have to get into the bones and the, and the looks of it in the HTML and CSS, they sort of fall apart. And I, I think part of the reason for that is Bootstrap at the end of the day. I think, I think for the last five or 10 years, Bootstrap has crippled an, an entire generation of developers because it's sort of been become this go-to tool uh, in in front-end development. And part of, part of the problem with that is it doesn't really get you anything in the long term. Yeah, in, in the short term, you get an easy, you know, an apparent in the past, an easy responsive uh, framework. But in the in the long term, you you lose out on be, becoming a better developer. Um, you also don't learn the, you know, if you have something that's giving you, you know, quote unquote, all the answers, you're not going to be staying up to date on the latest and the greatest, which for the most part has deprecated, maybe not deprecated, but has added alternatives that are native to CSS, which means that we don't have to install another dependency into our project. And God knows in the JavaScript realm of things, projects have tons upon tons of dependencies that we can eliminate that one. And we don't have to worry about, you know, um, style uh, conflicts and items like that. But also, when it comes to CSS, if we're always using someone else's framework, we're not going to have the, the time or the reason to, uh, rather, to learn about design principles when it comes to CSS, right? Maybe, 
in your HTML because you're using their components and you're not thinking about it yourself at this point you're, because you're letting someone else do the thinking for you. You're not challenging yourself to learn about, you know, how to do HTML uh, correct in, the, in a semantic way. You may not be thinking about how to set up your CSS for components using maybe atomic design or whatever sort of architecture you go because you're just importing a library. These are all crucial skills as you move forward and a lot of what you'll see when you when you advance in your career is that as it as you go from junior to senior you're going to get better with your you know several as a developer but what does that mean right it means that you know all your skills are going to level up but skills that you had a very shallow foundation such as architecture um design in terms of des uh, designing you know designing your folder structure designing design techniques, even just actual design and CSS and items like that, those those things that were very shallow, you will have be expected to, to be proficient in. And when you're starting to use other people's style libraries, when you're starting to let someone else do the thinking for you, and, and on top of it, not staying up to date on on the latest technologies, you are you are hindering yourself, and I, I think that's what Bootstrap has done. And and I I say this as somebody who has who has gone through that process of you know a year ago looking back and thinking like wow what am why am I so bad at CSS? This is something I, I genuinely have had a a conflict with. Of I know I'm bad at CSS. Why is it I you know I I can code anything and. But why is it that when it comes to making it look right, when it comes to making the page look as it should, as it looks in my head, right? Why is it that that is always such a challenge? And the the the, the truth is, it's because in the past I've relied on Bootstrap for my styles, right? And like if I were to ask you in an interview, right? You come in to interview with me and for a front end dev role, and I say, hey. You know that, you you know, you're probably familiar with Bootstrap, right? You know that BTN success button, that green button? Uh, BT, BTN outline success, whatever, whichever uh, button you want. I want you to go ahead and write, tell me what the CSS is to make that. A, a good portion of people would struggle just to write that CSS, and that, that's a shame, because that, that's not something super complicated. And if I, I said, hey, how would you do responsive, you know, we have a menu here. I want you to build a menu, a navigation menu. It goes horizontally when it's a desktop, and it goes it goes it shrinks down to a hamburger when it's mobile. How would you handle that? A good portion of, of junior developers wouldn't be able to do it in a in a whiteboard interview. And they they may not even have they may not even be able to write a media query to get started because they're so used to bootstrap handling these sorts of items for them. And it is, I'm saying, I'm making this video to make a point that it is time to, to remove the crutches that you, we have given ourselves in web development. And one of those, one of the larger ones are these UI libraries and UI frameworks. And I don't think necessarily that you can't use them uh, for anything. Uh, we use them in work for a lot of back office tools where, hey, we don't really care about the design, so we use Bootstrap 4 to just make everything look the same. That's it. Now we can do custom media queries and whatnot, uh, but they, you know, we use it for that aspect. And I, I think it's kind of fun. I think everyone should be experienced working with the UI frameworks and, and libraries. And I, I would say a cool little project you could do is go and get the top five um, you know, UI libraries like you know Angular Material, Bootstrap, and, and find out about three or four, three or four other ones, and then just build a single project in, in them. And you could even a cool little project would be is build that same project, build a ha build like a tab, right, and then in that same project show it in the five different UI styles 
where you, all you're doing, the HTML is all the same, but you're just changing the classes to showcase, you know, each individual UI. That'd be a pretty, pretty cool project to me, just to kind of showcase that you're, you know, you're, you're working with these technologies and whatnot and just be familiar. But the problem is when you start using it, instead of using it in 10 or even 25% of projects, you start using it in 90 to 100% of projects because then you start losing out on things. You start you start not gaining, you're not, your, your CSS isn't progressing and your HTML isn't progressing like it should. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I just want to make that point because it's something that I've noticed in my, uh, that one way that I've been able to improve my CSS is by dropping Bootstrap and dropping these UI libraries and just going back to the, you know, going back to the roots, I guess. Uh, CSS and CSS for the last couple of years has just been exploding with new additions and I, I imagine it's going to continue to do that especially with evergreen browsers now like all the major browsers are, are self-updating and so you know the companies uh, uh, you know CSS and JavaScript they're not afraid to an HTML5 they're not afraid to throw out new 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 items because the, the browsers are continually updating automatically and they're making sure that hey that this is that the latest and the greatest can work in our browser, even if it's behind by a couple of months. Um, so, and then we have our, our build tools and all that sort of stuff that help with that. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I probably shouldn't have filmed this on the way into work. Uh, that was a bad decision. Don't do as I don't do as I do. Do as I say. Don't do things like this. And uh, I will. Uh, I'll see you next time. Subscribe, notification bell, all that good stuff. Bye, guys. So, uh, Web Dev Profesh says, Sweet course. I love a good course with lots of portfolio candy. Do you think it's possible to solve all the algorithms with any language of choice, or are they specifically for JavaScript? So, he's talking about my 100 algorithm challenge course, where there's a link in the description below. Uh, but uh, essentially, uh, so I, I solve it in JavaScript and TypeScript, yes. But really, the benefit you get out of a course like this is you get to see 100 different solutions. And at the end of the day, there may be some methods and uh, that don't exist in your language of choice, but the objective is the same. We need to come. We need to get there some path. So I have no doubt that you'll get value out of the course, and you'll probably learn a little bit more about JavaScript. But you also learn how to think like a developer, which is kind of the whole point of the course, and that will translate to any language. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you subscribed and hit that notification bell. Check out my latest course, the 100 Algorithms Challenge, where we go through 100 different algorithms in JavaScript and TypeScript so that you can ace your next JavaScript coding interview. You can get it in the description for just $9.99. Check it out. See you next time. Thanks for watching.